So question 4a, prove using induction that the following is divisible by 7. So you have your three-step process here. First of all, we need to show uh, that it's true for n is equal to 1. Then you have your assumed true for n is equal to k. And then you show true for n is equal to k plus 1. So like I said, show true for n is equal to 1 is my first step. So all I'm doing here is I'm subbing in uh, 1 for n. So that's 2 to the power of 3 times 1, subtract 1, uh, plus 3. That's giving me 2 to the power of 3, subtract 1, plus 3, which is 2 to the power of 2, plus 3. 2 to the power of 2 is 4, plus 3, which is giving me 7. And 7 is divisible by 7, so therefore true. So that's our first step done. Step two, we are now going to assume true for n is equal to k. All I'm doing for step two is I'm subbing in k for n. So that's gonna become two to the power of three times k, subtract one plus three, which is two to the power of three k, subtract one plus three. So I'm assuming that that is divisible by seven. Moving on now to step three. And step three is going to be uh, prove true for n is equal to k plus one. So this time for n, I'm subbing in k plus one. So that's going to give me uh, two to the power of three times k plus one, and then put in my plus one, add three. Uh, a little bit of tidying up here, I'm just gonna multiply in this three into the bracket. So that's giving me two to the power of three k plus three plus one, and then plus my three. Um, what can we do from there? I'm just going to, sorry, that's a negative one outside the bracket. Sorry, not a plus one, that's a negative one. Let me just change that. Uh, I'm just gonna rearrange the order there, the, uh, the three and the negative one. I'm just gonna change the order of that and you'll see why in a second. So that's three K minus one plus three uh, plus my positive three. Because what I'm trying to do here is, I'm trying to make this uh, somewhat the same as up above with my step two. So I'm trying to achieve two to the power of three K minus one. Uh, so that's all I'm trying to do here. So if I use my rules of logs on page 21, this is the same as two to the power of three K subtract one times two to the power of three plus my three. So I'm just bringing in that uh, two to the power of three there. Again, from my uh, log tables, first log there on page 21. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is, um, I'm gonna work out two to the power of three. So that's two to the power of three X minus one times eight plus three. Again, I want this to be divisible by seven. So I'm just gonna rewrite the number eight now as seven plus one. So two to the power of three K subtract one times seven plus one, that's the same as eight, that's all I've done. And my next step is I'm now going to multiply that into the bracket. So that is giving me seven times two to the power of three K subtract one, uh, plus one times two to the power of three K subtract one. So I don't need to put that one outside, you can if you want. And then don't forget your constant of three. Okay. So we are practically finished here. We just need to make some conclusions now on our, based on our work. So what do I know? Look at this part here. I know that this is divisible uh, by seven uh, because seven is a factor. So the seven there, the factor of seven, seven times anything must be divisible by seven. So that's the first part done. We know that that is divisible by seven. And if we come to the next part, from step two, we assumed this to be true. 
Okay, so if you scroll back up there, you can see from uh, step two, we, we assume that two to the power of three K subtract one plus three is divisible by seven. So what does that mean? So our final conclusion, just to make sure uh, we make our conclusion here at the end. So therefore, we can now conclude that seven times two to the power of three K subtract one plus two to the power of three k subtract one plus three is divisible by seven and we uh the reason why this is so we said that it is since true for n is equal to one assumed true for n is equal to k and proved true for n is equal to k plus one it is therefore true for all values of n when n is a positive integer, a natural number. So a little bit uh, messy there, the handwriting, apologies for that. But uh, that is our proof by induction to question 4a. I'm just going to zoom out here a little bit, just if uh, we need to take a larger view on it at home. So we'll now scroll down onto question 4b. So we're into patterns. Uh, they've given us this uh, sequence and it is an arithmetic sequence where p is an element of n. Find the nth uh, term, tn, in terms of n and p. So from our log tables we know the formula for an arithmetic sequence is tn is equal to a plus n minus one times d. Uh, from the above sequence, we know that our a is our first term, which is p, and our difference, well, just take any two consecutive terms. So I'm going to take uh, term two, and I'm going to subtract the previous term, term one. So it doesn't matter which two terms you take away as long as they're consecutive. So you can go term three, take away term two, term five, take away term five. Uh, four. So p plus 7 minus p is giving me a difference of, well the p's will cancel so my, my d is just 7. So if I sub that into my formula tn is equal to a which is my p plus n minus 1 times d which is 7. Just tidy it up now by multiplying in that 7 into the bracket so that's giving me tn is equal to p plus 7n subtract 7. And that's our end term. Part two, uh, find the smallest value of P for which 2021 is a term in the sequence. So let's see what we have here. So we have our uh, formula for TN, which is 7N uh, plus P minus seven. So that's from part one above. So I've just rearranged that. That's the same as 7P plus 7N plus P uh, minus seven. So I've just rearranged them. And that's equal to 2021 because 2021 is a term in the sequence, so it must satisfy it. Uh, what can we do there then? I'm going to move over this minus 7, uh, which leaves me with 7n plus p is equal to 2021. Add 7 to both sides will leave me with 7n plus p is equal to 2028. I'm going to move over to P. Let's see what that gives us. 7n is equal to 2028 minus P. So that means therefore that n is equal to 2028 over 7 minus P over 7. So I'm dividing both sides by 7 there, uh, which is the same as a decimal, what's that? 289.7 reoccurring minus P over 7. There's a little bit of trial and error here to help us um, so we know that if we use that 289 now as our value for n, so uh, I know it's not the exact value for n, but we're, we're trying to get the smallest value of p. So with a little bit of trial and error, so let's just see what this gives us. So if I take my 7n plus p minus 7, and if I sub in 290, let's just, because I'm rounding to 289.7 up to 290, so that gives me 7 times 290 plus p minus 7. Now that's giving me, uh, what's that giving me? 2030 uh, plus p 
minus 7. So that will give me 20, 23 plus P. Uh, but that can't work. So I'm going to put an X on this. And the reason for it is, in order for me to make P uh, 2023 become 2021, uh, that would mean then that P would be negative. So that would give me, so again, don't forget if this was equal to 2021 and I move that over, that would give me P is equal to negative two. And P can't be negative two because at the top of the page there it says where P is an element of N. So I can't have that. So that's when P, when N was 290. Let's see what happens when uh, P is equal to 289. So that'll give me 7 times 289 plus P minus 7, which is giving me 2023 plus P minus 7. Again, I'm trying to get to 2021. A little bit of tidying up here gets me 2016 plus P equals 2021. Uh, moving over to 2016 gives me a value of P is equal to 5, which does work because P is an element of N. Um, yeah, so find the smallest value of P. Uh, that's the smallest value I can find. Uh, maybe there's other ways of doing it, uh, but hopefully that will work. That's question four.